Today, we are going to compare two popular cameras, the Nikon D3200 and Nikon D5200. We are going to take a look at their features, who they are for, how they perform in various use cases, user experiences, and which one is the right one for you. Links to both of the cameras will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. The Nikon D3200 and the Nikon D5200 are two digital cameras that were officially introduced respectively in the 25th of July 2012 and the 16th of May 2013. Let's take a look at how their specs compare to each other. We tested both cameras to assess their performance in different scenarios. Let's take a closer look at our ratings for each of them. Here are our ratings for the Nikon D3200. For portrait photography, we will give it a 7 out of 10 rating. For street photography, we will give it a 7 out of 10 rating. For sports photography, we will give it a 9 out of 10 rating. For day-to-day -day photography, we will give it a 7 out of 10 rating. For landscape photography, we will give it a 6 out of 10 rating. Here are our ratings for the Nikon D5200. For portrait photography, we will give it a 7 out of 10 rating. For street photography, we will give it a 8 out of 10 rating. For sports photography, we will give it a 9 out of 10 rating. For day-to-day -day photography, we will give it a 7 out of 10 rating. For landscape photography, we will give it a 6 out of 10 rating. Next, we will take a look at some sample photos from the Nikon D3200 and the Nikon D5200. Keep in mind that these photos have editing done to them, so the result from your camera might be different. Let's start with the sample photos. Here are some sample photos from the Nikon D3200. And here are some sample photos from the Nikon D5200. Next, let's take a look at what other users of these cameras have to say about them. Here's what people have to say about the Nikon D3200. I recently switched to this camera from a Canon system, and I am extremely impressed with the image quality. It produces images on par with professional cameras that cost much more. However, it has some drawbacks, such as limited compatibility with older Nikon lenses, plastic build quality, and a less impressive viewfinder. Despite these issues, the camera is small and light, has good ergonomics, and comes with a decent quality lens. Overall, I highly recommend it for its incredible picture quality. I've been using this camera since 2012 and it's still going strong. It's great for nature and urban photography, and despite some noise while filming, it's a solid performer. It's lightweight, comfortable to hold, and definitely worth the investment. I've bought other cameras since, but I can't let go of this one. It's a special piece of equipment to me. Here's what people have to say about the Nikon D5200. I have been a Nikon D40X user for 7 years and recently upgraded to the D5200. The upgrade has increased my speed and creative freedom as a photographer. The camera offers more preset scenes and effects, as well as the ability to tweak individual parameters and full manual control. The knicker glass allows for shooting at higher ISOs without significant gr I received $500 as a gift and spent weeks researching cameras before settling on the D5200. It's lightweight and has a great LCD screen, but I was disappointed by the lack of dual dials and the need to use the function button to change settings. Despite the high image quality, it didn't meet my needs as a step up from my previous camera. However, I would recommend it to amateur photographers looking for a budget-friendly option with good image quality. To conclude, here are our overall ratings for both of these cameras. Nikon D3200 we will give it an overall rating of 8 out of 10. Nikon D5200, we will give it an overall rating of 8 out of 10. 